We are here at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts to talk with Executive Director Kelly Grill to talk about her lifelong love of theater, about life outside of theater, and to do a little improv as well. I'm looking forward to talking with her inside. Hi, Kelly. Thank you for having me here in the beautiful Hopkinton Center for the Arts today to talk about your life a bit. Thank you. Uh, um, it really, w this, from what I understand, is uh, part of the essence of who you are uh, beginning in the early days of your life. Uh, it's interwoven, it's, it's your roots, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that, how you um, got started in Hopkinton and how you are connected with this beautiful center honoring sure. the arts. Absolutely. So uh, I uh, actually moved here uh, when I was just four years old. And it came about because at the time my dad was substitute teaching all mm -hmm. over uh, the state. And uh, we were living in another town and he was teaching math here at Hopkinton High School. And <clears throat> prior to teaching here, he had lived uh, out in California and was uh, teaching in a really rough area of Los Angeles. So um, this was quite a change for him to come here. <laughs> and uh, the first day he was teaching, one of the students came up to him and said, uh, Mr. Prescott, can I go out and, and feed my horse at lunchtime? Mm -hmm. And he was very skeptical uh -huh. <laughs> about that because he'd <laughs> yeah. been where kids were not truthful. So he said, listen, uh, I don't believe that you're actually going to feed your horse, so you better do that or else, you know, be lots of consequences, detention, all of that. So she said, no, 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 really, I'm going to go over to the Terry farm and I'm, I'm going to feed my horse right there. So mm -hmm. he watched her out the window, walk from what was uh, the high school and it's now the middle school, across the, the farmland and uh, fed her horse and came back. Wow. And he went home that night to my mother and said, any town where a student can go and <laughs> feed their horse at lunchtime, that's where I want to live. Ah. And that's why that. we moved here. It's all about horses. All about horses <laughs> and just that wonderful small town feeling. Mm -hmm. He really mm -hmm. fell in love with it. So, uh, so I, we moved here and I went through the school systems here and, mm -hmm. um, and at junior junior high uh, around that time is when I first started to be exposed to music and art and uh, really fell in love with theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a wonderful uh, drama teacher at the time, Ed Corneli, who um, had seen me in one of the musicals and came up to me and said, you know, I really enjoyed your performance. I'd mm -hmm. love you to come out and be part of my drama club. And I was like, oh, wow, you know, somebody said that to me. And I did, and I was hooked, and I loved it. And made my true lifelong friends that are still friends mm -hmm. today from Hopkinton. And we, uh, we couldn't get enough of theater. And How many were in the drama club? Mm -hmm. At the then? time, the entire drama club from mm -hmm. ninth through 12th grade was 20 kids. Mm -hmm. That was the total. Oh, there was only at the know. time about 69 so, kids in my graduating class. It was 69. 69, mm -hmm. very <laughs> small uh, group. So that's intimate and intense experience of drama club. And, yes. And this teacher was instrumental in kind of uh, directing your future in a way? Very but, much so, yeah, mm -hmm. because I don't think I would have had the confidence uh, to come out. You know, mm -hmm. everybody did the musicals. That was the thing you did. Even football players, everybody did the musicals. But hmm. um, but to do a, a play, an yeah. actual play, an audition for that, I, I don't think I would have done it had he not encouraged me. Yeah, yeah. And then he went so much further is when we started doing plays, um, there was only two a year, and so we wanted to do more. So when the play was over, we would, you know, go to our friends' houses and write plays. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of improv comedy back then and writing oh, things, uh -huh. um, and I know you're familiar with. And <laughs> then uh, we wanted to perform it, so um, we went to him and said, "We really would like to do our own show, direct and do our own show." But you know, we couldn't just be in the auditorium without any kind of uh, oversight. So mm -hmm. he said, "I'll come in. I'll correct papers, and you guys do your thing." and and you and know, this is high school now. This is high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was um, probably f soft, freshman, sophomore, junior year. Mm -hmm. So uh, we credit him uh, mm -hmm. with the birth of ESL because at uh, that point he was able to say, you know, um, I I'll be here to support you. You, you go and mm -hmm. you know do your thing and, uh, and gave ESL us a space. Is, uh, when yes. you make reference to that, yes, that's interstage left theater mm -hmm. that we 
uh, we formed. Uh, the same core of your drama friends. Same core. Right. So mm -hmm. Mary Scarlatta Rowe, mm -hmm. Paul Champlin, mm -hmm. Don uh, Anderson, Don, was Don Lawrence at the time. Um, we, <clears throat> that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And we named it and we wrote shows. Uh, we wrote a full musical. We, uh, we got a grant from the local cultural council to put on Godspell. So um, uh -huh. we, we did all of that and, uh -huh. and had just a wonderful, joyful time. Mm. <clears throat> and we raised a little bit of money. We had scholarship for the library and scholarship for drama, wow. and things like that. And then we all kind of went to college and went off and did our things, mm -hmm. um, but slowly started to move back mm. to the area. So mm -hmm. I think this was like in the early 90s when we moved back. Um, so you went out and you're all in college in different places. Mm -hmm. uh, you're studying theater, yes. uh, all of you, and then you decide to come back? Is that yes, so we didn't, we all, uh, a couple of us studied theater mm -hmm. as a major, um, but um, all of us participated in theater. You know, there, most of us have jobs in other professions, mm -hmm. but we pursued it in some way, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and then and then after, you know, I got married, had kids, you know, I lived in California for a while. Um, mm -hmm. And then I knew I wanted to raise my family back here, mm -hmm. you know, near my, near my parents and near my sisters and, you know, in this area. A little of the journey of your dad, California, and then yeah. back here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually didn't think mm -hmm. about it that way. But yeah, actually the same thing. Um, and my kids were two and four when we moved back. To, oh, no, I'm sorry. Much younger. Two and four when we... Uh, moved to the uh, our house but um, I think my son was only three months old and my daughter was two when we moved back home mm -hmm. and we'd been in California for about five years and I uh, and we came back and we were here for a little while and it was my friend Don uh, mm -hmm. who had come to me one day we both had little kids and having coffee and running around she said you know uh, there's still a, a little savings account at Middlesex Savings Bank mm -hmm. that has the money from ESL and I said, oh, great, let's go to dinner. You know, let's go to crew. Like, it was about $1,500 or something like that. Mm -hmm. She said, well, I was thinking maybe we could do a play. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. So we did. And mm -hmm. that was probably mid-90s. We put on a play. We had to go out of town to find a space mm -hmm. um, in a theater. Um, and that was really fun, and people liked it. So we did another and another, and we did a play. And it felt back like our high school days. We yeah. were in the Baptist church in town here. Mm -hmm. and to get back into the groove of that, it. Yeah. What was that first play? That the year? first play was called Painting Churches. Hmm. It was just hmm. three people. Hmm. Um, and it was, and I was, I acted in it, she directed it. We had a couple new people come and it was about a woman who, uh, whose parents, her father was suffering from Alzheimer's. They were moving out of the house and she was coming back uh, to help them, you hmm. know, uh, hmm. move in their house. It was a, a beautiful little play. Um, and, and we just, we were having fun, hmm. you know. Hmm. At the time I was a recruiter. So mm -hmm. after, I, when I went to California, I, I did act professionally for a little while, but pretty quickly um, got married and had kids and needed a, a real job. Mm -hmm. And so I uh, ended up being a recruiter in a temp and administrative placement agency. And That's stayed in intense that, work, right? It is, mm -hmm. yeah. It needs a little acting. You know, you have to sort of, <laughs> as a selling acting kind of, uh -huh. kind of a job. Sure, and, yeah. Um, and I did end up... Um, staying in that career for almost 20 years wow. um, and mm -hmm. ended up uh, being a partner in a, in a company in Natick here, um, Bernard mm -hmm. Group. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed it, but um, it was, you know, when we, this was my fun at night, we were doing plays mm -hmm. and doing things and we just kept noticing that people were just really positively responding mm -hmm. to it and mm -hmm. wanting to be part of it. and. Um, so it grew from one play to two plays to we're now up to 10 to 12 a year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's wow. A little crazy. Uh -huh. um, and it's more about uh, fun and kind of feeling alive, right? Yeah. It sounds like rather than, you know, uh, driven to uh, achieve or, you know, be famous. Or well, so what I, what I think has happened um, through the evolution of what we're doing is um, the idea was to, to have fun, but to do, real, to do good work, mm -hmm. you know, to have yeah. the work yeah. be as professional as possible mm -hmm. um, with people who, because we, we identified ourselves as people that maybe could have gone on and mm -hmm. had a career mm -hmm. in entertainment or, or, or film or television or acting, but we, made, we chose a different path. We mm -hmm. chose to, you know, raise a family or we chose a different career. Mm -hmm. um, but that didn't mean that the talents or the desire wasn't still there. Mm -hmm. So we really wanted to be able to 
showcase talent mm -hmm. and educate. Yes. So mm -hmm. the big piece was um, we were doing adult plays at first, and then Mary Scarlett Rowe, another original mm -hmm. uh, member of ESL, had been teaching some acting classes mm -hmm. in the area. And where I was working at um, the Bernard Group, she said, well, maybe you could help me to fill these classes and, and you know, get some more students. And so I did that, and the very first time we worked together, um, her class ended up having 35 students in it, and she'd oh. never had that many, uh -huh. or that reaction before. So we both thought, ooh, mm -hmm. <laughs> this, this is something here. And so uh, and we did that one at the, at, it was a different name, but now the Faith Church down, down mm -hmm. the road let us rent some space from them. Mm -hmm. And then we realized there's this education piece with young people mm -hmm. that they were looking to not just perform, but to learn how to act and sing mm -hmm. and dance. Um, so that piece of the business started to happen. It wasn't a business at the time. Which is what you all were about. You were young and we were young. had that same interest, right? We did. We mm. did. We did. So then it got to the point where um, there was enough of an interest that we started to look for our own space. Mm -hmm. And that's when we um, rented the barbershop uh, downtown. Mm -hmm. It was a barbershop yes. for 35 years. I remember attending programs yeah. there and enjoying mm -hmm. The community art there, yeah, and, and then there's more growing forward, right? Moving forward and growing <laughs> forward, and we we when I look back now at the time, we, we just kept rising to meet whatever the need was. Mm -hmm. You know, it, mm -hmm. it it never really occurred to us how far it would go until we were in it for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so I I was doing that for about a year, working at my other job and working. Uh, for ESL it's and a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Yeah, it was two and a full-time family. job and a family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a lot, and it, I we finally get to the point where we said, "Well, I, I think if we're going to make a go of this, that I need to just be all in." And mm -hmm. uh, and I happily did that, and and so that was uh, around 2000 and um, 2004. And we were there at, at Main Street for six years, mm -hmm. and it grew and grew and grew, kept growing out of the space, growing out of the space. And we did other things, like I know you had come in for, uh, we had open mics and we had um, mm -hmm. concerts there. Yeah. and All kinds of great things for really, the community. Yeah, and it was great to be downtown, you mm -hmm. know, because people would walk by and walk in and, hey, what's happening? And we had a little mm -hmm. restaurant next by. It was really very, very sweet space. It just wasn't big enough. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then in 2010, through the encouragement of um, my former teacher, Chuck Joseph, who was my ah, uh, history teacher, okay. um, and was the um, president of the Hopkins Community Endowment, mm -hmm. and they were looking to support a project in town. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, have you thought about, you know, coming and partnering with the Cultural Arts Alliance? And I said, you know, we've talked about it. Maybe we should be more formal about it. And, we did, and they embraced the idea in mm -hmm. 2010, um, and then uh, the endowment uh, jumped on board to support us um, with fundraising, and all the stars sort of aligned then, and so we, and Chris Waldman was the executive director mm -hmm. of Cultural Arts Alliance and had a visual art background, and I had performing arts background, so it, it just was a, a perfect marriage, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we formed the HCA at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and so in 2011 was our official launching of uh, the Hopkins Center for the Arts. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it's only been 2011, so now I guess this is our eighth year. Yes, how about that? Huh. Yeah, yeah, 2019 now, and yeah. uh, there are, uh, this wonderful theater here of, I don't know how many seats are. Yeah, so, uh, and then it, it, flu it fluctuates, it's flexible, mm -hmm. so the most would be like 210 seats. Right mm -hmm. now it's about mm -hmm. 135. Uh -huh. Yeah. But yeah. And you have all kinds of uh, performances here of music and theater and classes from yeah, very young uh, mm -hmm. until uh, later, far later in life. Uh, yeah. The hope of getting connected to the arts is possible yeah. in, yes. the, in our town of Hopkinton. Um, mm -hmm. Thanks to this uh, seed of dream of mm -hmm. you and yeah. your friends and yeah. your teacher and how it all, uh, the story unfolds. Yeah, it really was. I mean, it really was so many. Um, I'm, I'm grateful for all the people yeah. in, my, in my life, but th this place is really um, because of so many people, uh, strongly because of the Cultural Arts Alliance and, mm -hmm. and Chris yeah. Waldman and her vision yes. and um, the Hopkins Community Endowment and their support. Mm -hmm. And then um, we got a large grant from the Mass Cultural mm -hmm. Council. So 
you know, I, I just feel grateful to be along for the yes. ride. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, driving it uh, mm. and uh, as maybe not kind of as you go, you're creating yeah. as you go you, uh, but with this yeah. little seed of dream when you were yeah. young. Huh? Yeah. Um, so, so now we understand uh, in your story how you are so uh, interconnected mm. uh, with this beautiful building mm -hmm. and um, to, oh, I'm just curious if you had, I, I was reading a little in, um, on uh, the internet about uh, how uh, this center has made a difference for community, it gives to community, mm -hmm. um, and I read a few of the little testimonials and remarks of people. Do you have one or two uh, very fleeting uh, stories or remembrances how yeah. people have talked about what it means to? Yeah, well, I have a couple stories. Um, that come to the top of my mind. Like a minute, maybe, yeah. so I can talk more about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, well, the first is, is Sinai Tabak. Uh, Sinai uh, is actually from Milford and is a young gentleman who came to us at the age of 14, I think. And he loved to play piano and um, is an actor as well and singer, but he loved to play piano. And so he would play for our shows. Um, he would come play keyboard for shows. And it was really remarkable, like with, within a very short time we realized how gifted he was. Mm -hmm. And he could not just, he could play and also teach the music and then, can, you know, I suggested one day, would you teach the um, musicians? Because mm -hmm. we had student musicians and things. And he said, sure, I think I could do that. So he did that from 16 through till when he graduated from college. Um, and he will remark, which I find very flattering, that um, this gave him the opportunity to sort of see uh, that this might be something he wanted to do as a career. Wow. Hmm. And so... I remember hearing him very talented. Very talented yeah. and just so, just a wonderful personality yeah. and easy to mm -hmm. work with and, and we knew he would do well. Mm -hmm. um, but I got a call uh, uh, not too long ago, just a few months ago, and he told me, Kelly, I am walking to uh, my very first um, opening for my first Broadway show as the associate music conductor. Wow. And I'm wearing my um, Enter Stage Love t-shirt oh. underneath my box. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what a great story. So that huh? was pretty wonderful. Oh, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah, it is. Mm. It is. We're very fortunate. And we hear, mm -hmm. we hear stories. I mean, there's so many talented, and not just students. You mm -hmm. know, we have mm -hmm. adults that have come to us that never sang before in front of an audience. Uh, one in particular, uh, uh, I remember Jeff McMillan, who's here from town, and He'd never, uh, he always sang, you know, in the shower or friends or parties or whatever and never sang. And he came and auditioned for our very first USO show. And he said, I think this is something like to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know how old he was at the time, but uh, had retired. Mm -hmm. And he stand up and sang. I, I, I couldn't believe it. He was so wonderful and mm -hmm. had this amazing crooner voice. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. And I said, why haven't you <laughs> sung? <laughs> so he's been starring in our USO shows and then done some acting and some other wow. things. And um, his son uh, lives in uh, London now and had come to see one of his performances and came back and said, you don't know what this has done for my dad. Oh, uh -huh. You know, it just has opened up this whole other world for him. And, hmm. um, and we're so grateful because we adore him and that and those stories because mm -hmm. that's what music and art can do. All the arts can do is it, it touches another part of you and hmm. it helps you be expressive mm -hmm. and... Um, and uh, communicate with the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Communicate with the world. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and your uh, specific passion for theater, uh, why do you value theater mm. uh, as an art form? That's a great question. I, I really think it's about conversations. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's so, and telling stories. Mm -hmm. And theater mm -hmm. is um, an incredible way to um, start, continue, have conversations. Um, sometimes difficult conversations, mm -hmm. and sometimes um, just being able to bring to light a story um, that maybe doesn't have um, an opportunity otherwise. And in a way that when you're in, a, in an audience, and you're, you're sitting and all together as a community, mm -hmm. um, having the same experience, watching uh, this story, there's nothing like that, mm -hmm. um, that, that can move you in a way that just reading about it or hearing about it um, may not. Mm -hmm. It's a very special thing, and and it's a it's a celebration. It really is. Yeah. And uh, why do you think stories are important to be shared? Uh, the only way, in my opinion, mm -hmm. <laughs> to uh, to tackle an issue mm -hmm. or a problem or uh, 
is to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and it's difficult, whether, whether it's we did uh, Of Mice and Men and talking about racial inequality or talking, mm -hmm. uh, we had a dance performance here that um, dealt with bullying and it was through movement that there was that, and, and, and suicide. And, and, it, and then there's conversations about just being adolescents and growing up and what that's like, mm -hmm. or um, how wonderful marriage is and how wonderful mm -hmm. being in love is. And um, it's sharing those stories uh, in a, a way that's very accessible mm -hmm. to everyone. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. conversation, whether it's a difficult conversation or whether it's a joyful conversation, uh, it's still uh, important to share it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, so with that said, I am wondering if maybe for two minutes uh -huh. you could go into role of teacher as we okay. sometimes do, <laughs> uh, okay. since you do have done teaching, mm -hmm. uh, right, yeah. in yeah. performing arts and theater, and yes. um, teach me some sudden skill. I will represent all our viewers as okay. an audience, <laughs> uh, novice, beginner, but okay. maybe something that would be helpful or interesting to learn from you. Okay, okay. So um, oh, there's so many things, but I think we could do a, a little exercise, um, uh, improv exercise. All like right, um, improv. What improv. I what I fear most, <laughs> <laughs> and that I think most people do. Um, uh -huh. And I think yeah. um, part of that is because there's this sense of I'm going to say the wrong thing, or mm -hmm. uh, you know I'm going to look foolish, um, and you can't. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what you say mm -hmm. um, in this exercise or any of these exercises, is um, nothing is wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can be as cr extravagant or out of the box crazy as you want to be. The key is not to shut down. So this exercise is called Yes And. Uh -huh. So I'm going to say something to you. I'm going to start a story mm -hmm. and tell you what we're going to do and where we're going. And your role is to just say yes to whatever I say to you mm -hmm. and then and add on to it. So in other words, if I say, you know, we're going to go on a... 26 mile hike now, you wouldn't say, oh no, I can't do that, I'm too, I'm too tired to the, it's yes, and we're gonna bring some granola with us, or uh -huh. whatever it is. Um, mm -hmm. And it could be, we're gonna bring an alien with us. It could be as mm -hmm. crazy as, as you want it to be. Make All sense? Right. All right, okay. So, we'll start. All right, Cheryl, you know, I'm feeling like, um, I really would like some peppermint peanut butter sandwiches. And so we need to go out and find the peppermint. I have no idea where we're going to get it. So how about we just get into this boat and go find some peppermint? Yes, let's go into the boat and, and we will travel on the ocean and we will find the wonderful herb farm uh, off the coast of Maine uh, where we can get all the peppermint we can possibly ever want for peanut butter sandwiches. I can't wait. Oh, <laughs> yes, let's do that. And when we get into this boat, let's bring along Herbie the ogre is going to come with us because, you know, he's really good at reaching high up on that tree to get the peppermint out of the tree. So Herbie's going to come with us, but, you know, maybe we should bring some snacks along for him as well. He happens to like bananas with his, pe with his peppermint and peanut butter, so I'll bring on these bananas onto the boat. Let's go. <laughs> yes, for Herbie. We have bananas on the boat for his special snack, and he loves to intermix them with uh, popcorn and popsicles as well, and he puts it all into a big baguette and eats it for his snack, and we'll bring along some uh, monkeys who enjoy the bananas as well, and, and they'll help carry them up to the trees, and, and we will bring bananas to the per peppermint trees, and maybe there'll be some intermixing there. Well, we'll have peppermint banana plants growing <laughs> in Maine. In Maine, yes, yes. That's a wonderful trip. I'm very excited. Let's go. All right, let's go. <laughs> and that's and that's and a that's little it. exercise, yeah. right? Yes, that's uh -huh. it. And it, it, so because what happens is when actors, um, especially novice actors, get up onto a stage. Um, it, it becomes about them and they get nervous and sort of shut down a little mm -hmm. bit. Yeah. And, and, it, and if you say no, that ends the scene. Mm -hmm. So if you say, uh, you know, no, I don't like that idea or no, I don't want to bring bananas, <laughs> then the scene is over. But if you say yes, you just keep rolling with uh -huh. it and yeah. it can get yeah. as, you know, wild or crazy as you want it to be. But you stay focused on that story and on that person and it moves the scene forward. Yeah. So that's, well, that's the great. And it was fun. And I know laughter is important to you. You've been involved in a lot of comedy. Now I see we have just a little bit of time left mm -hmm. in the interview. And I wanted to shift the focus <clears throat> a little bit to life beyond uh, 
here at HCA with you as executive director and all the work that you're doing. And uh, I understand more recently that you have, in the past few years, uh, been dealing with the care and the recent loss of your sister, which mm -hmm. I am very sorry to hear of. Yeah. And I know that has uh, shifted uh, the direction and, and broadened, in a way, yeah. uh, the focus of your life, if you couldn't talk for a few minutes. Yeah, sure, sure, yes, thank you. So my sister Kara uh, obviously grew up here in, in Hopkinton with me and worked for the Boston Athletic Association for many, many years and she, the healthiest person I knew and um, was unfortunately diagnosed with um, small non-cell um, lung cancer uh, at uh, the age of 48. And so um, sadly she did uh, pass away after 18 months and um, I had the privilege, really, the honor of being her caregiver. Wow. And she... Um, was a widow, so um, she has two girls, and they were 14 and 11 at the time, so I am now raising her girls, and they're incredibly wonderful, amazing kids, and uh, Maggie is looking now to go to college, and Kate is um, freshman at BVT, um, and uh, my son actually is uh, now living with us as well, and mm -hmm. has, I have, in the incredible joy of my life is a two-year-old granddaughter. Oh, congratulations. Uh, it's wow. wonderful. Full, uh, and full, and full spectrum. Right? And my other, my daughter um, lives in New York City. She actually works in casting and film and television. Oh, and But okay. she's not too far, so she comes to visit us. So it's, um, you know, a, a blended, I guess, um, uh, but loving family. And mm -hmm. um, so I'm not too far. I'm in Upton. Um, I feel like I'm in, you know, Hopkinton even more than, <laughs> more than I'm in Upton. Uh, well, we're doing but you know life um life can be crazy and take different turns um i hope that uh, my my focus on my journey for for this part is is honoring my sister in the best mm -hmm. way that i can mm -hmm. so i i really believe if if you want something if you're dreaming about something and you you put it out there in the universe mm -hmm. somehow it comes to you i, I know that sounds very silly but I, it's proven to be true for me and many people that I know that you have to really um, put it out there believe in it first and just follow where it takes you mm -hmm. uh, and it'll take you to a wonderful place I will be standing I cannot believe it where Thespis stood that was my thing as, as an actor I, I have to be where the first actor was mm -hmm. so that's in Greece mm -hmm. and I'll oh, be doing that you know thanks to my wonderful boyfriend who's been very supportive of me to say, let's just do this, mm. because mm -hmm. if not now, when? Right. Just do right. it. Right. Oh, great advice, <laughs> and have a wonderful trip. Thank you. And thank you so much for this really special interview today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Art.